Okay, and welcome back to day two. Today, I'm not going to lie, can be a little bit difficult and you might feel quite a bit of resistance around this, but I just need you to really power through this part because this is the part that's going to give you the most transformations. And this is the part that you can continue to do throughout your life as part of your manifesting journey, as part of your life's journey to reach your goals and things. This is the part that's really going to change your life. So really take this part seriously. Make sure you've got your journal out, your pen and paper, ready to take notes because there's going to be some questions that I'm going to ask you and then you can use them as like do them as part of the homework as well. So today is all about how to identify your limiting beliefs and how these hold you back and how we're basically going to find out what they are. Because like I said yesterday, we don't actually know what's going on within our subconscious because it's unconscious. It's it's programming. Our brain couldn't possibly know everything that's going on in our subconscious because all of these ha things happen without us knowing. It's got all of our memories stored in there. It is everything that keeps our body going. So it's what pumps our heart. It's what put bl puts blood in the right places. It's how we heal ourselves. It's how we grow. It's how we sleep and regenerate and all these things. All of this stuff is happening through our subconscious. So there is just no way that our brain would be able to comprehend everything if we had access to everything all the time. If we knew everything that was going on all the time, there's just no way we could be consciously doing all that stuff. We couldn't remember to breathe and think and talk and walk at the same time. It's just impossible. So that's why we only have access to 5% at a conscious level. And that's why the rest of it is, is basically unconscious. So it's within your subconscious and you don't have access to it. So we need to basically shine a light on these limiting beliefs. And I call them limiting beliefs, but they're just beliefs. And, and they limit us because maybe they're not beliefs that we want to hold on to. They're things that we feel are holding us, holding us back because it stops us from growing. We're procrastinating. We're not taking leaps of faith, not taking risks, not doing the things we know we need to know, need to do. And we're also not manifesting the life we want. We're not in the right frequency, whatever it might be. It's because these beliefs are holding us back. So what is a limiting belief and why is it so important? And I spoke about it quite a bit yesterday, but essentially let's say you have a goal, but you never ever remove the limiting belief that you're not good enough. Well, then no matter what action you take, no matter what you do, you're never ever going to reach that goal because either you're going to procrastinate like we spoke about yesterday, or you're never going to be in the right frequency, or you're always going to end up back in the space that you were at within this cycle this pattern and I'm sure you know what I'm talking about because there's a reason you're on this call so that's what your limiting belief is it's, it's a belief that you have about something that is holding you back from your dream life from your achieving your goals so some rules about the subconscious mind that I think are really important to understand so that when you are doing the reprogramming pro the process when you are rewiring your brain you know how to do it most effectively so I'm going to whiz through these but it takes everything personally. Now, this one is very interesting because if you are gossiping, if you are bitching, if you are moaning, if you are talking about how that person's fat and she's ugly and she's mean and she hoards money and all these different things, first of all, your subconscious brain doesn't know you're talking about somebody else. It doesn't know. It just thinks you're talking. So if you're saying these nasty things about other people, it thinks you're saying them about yourself. And so you're going to start to identify as somebody who hoards money who is ugly who is nasty whatever but also first of all karma right <laughs> just be a good person I know it can be really tempting because people do like to bitch and moan you can get really caught up in it and I've had to really learn to like excuse myself from the conversation and stuff but you you start to become that person you're talking about and also when we see something in somebody else that we don't like a lot of the time it is literally a mirror and what we're actually seeing is something we don't like within ourselves. So that's always been a really good question to ask yourself is, okay, well, why am I saying this nasty thing about this person? Why am I judging her based on this thing that she's doing? It's because there's something within me that is also like that. So that's also a really good question to ask yourself when you find yourself doing that. And when you're reprogramming your subconscious mind, it's all become more effective in the next video that I do tomorrow, but it doesn't hear the negative. So if you're saying things like, oh, I don't wanna be broke, I don't wanna be broke, all the universe hears is the broke. It doesn't hear the don't. So you can't say things like, okay, it's like when you talk to a child because your subconscious is basically a child, is your inner child. It is. It was developed through the ages of naught to seven, like I mentioned yesterday. So when you say to a kid, don't touch that, what do they do? All they hear is that last bit, touch it. So they touch it. And since becoming a mum, I see it all the time and it's so easy to be like, no, don't do that when instead you need to give them the direction of what you want them to do instead. It's exactly the same thing with your subconscious mind. What would you like your subconscious mind to do instead? I am rich. 
I'm abundant. I have X, Y, and Z, whatever you put down for your intention for this week. And it's always listening. Always. It's on 24 seven. You can't just turn it off and be like, "Mm, we're done now for the day. No, even when you're sleeping, your subconscious mind is working. That's why we have dreams. So your conscious mind shuts off, but your subconscious is still working, which is why I'm going to talk about subliminals. And I love them because your conscious mind is switched off. So there's no arguing there and you can just have subliminals put in. But it's always listening. So when you're watching TV, when you have the news on in the background, when you are around a bunch of negative people and all they do is bitch and moan the whole night, even though you might not be participating in that conversation, you're still hearing it. Um, it's, so yeah, always on. What are you falling asleep to when you when you go to bed? Because that's what your subconscious mind is going to be thinking about. The last thing you think about as you fall asleep is what you dream about and what you think about and what goes into your subconscious. So is it something positive? Um, and it doesn't know the difference between real and imagined. I freaking love this one. How cool, how amazing that your subconscious does not know the difference. And they did an incredible test and I'll see if I can find it and I'll put it in the in the Facebook group for you guys where they, they did like a really interesting study where somebody had to go to the gym or whatever and do a particular workout for their biceps. And then they had a bunch of people just sit at home and imagine doing the workout. Now they didn't have the same amount of growth. Of course, the people that went to the gym had bigger growth on their biceps but the people that were just imagining it still had growth excuse the cat good timing they still had growth more more so than if they just stayed at home so something did happen within them that changed so it doesn't know the difference so this is where like visualizations and pretending and and having a different scenario play out in your mind is so important it's programmed by repetition and strong emotion that's why people talk about affirmations subliminals I can talk more about human design. I might do in one of the other days about how this affects different human design types and strong emotion. So this is why, yes, your subconscious is programmed between the ages of zero and seven. However, any other sort of like strong emotion kind of trauma that happens past that age can have an effect on you and can instill a limiting belief. For example, I had a scenario a few years ago where I had some misunderstandings with business partners and there was a lot of emotion and they were my friends and there was a big misunderstanding and we ended up falling out. So basically it caused a very strong emotion within me and I was distraught. And so it then caused this limited belief that I had within myself, which I then carried through for ages because I refused to look at it. And this is what I mean about this part. This part is uncomfortable. You don't want to look at this shadow part of yourself. You don't want to admit that when you're bitching about somebody else, you're talking about yourself. You don't want to take ownership. And maybe you don't want to look at past trauma from when you were younger, or even for me a few years ago, I didn't want to look at it and deal with it. So this part is really, really fucking hard. And this is why so many people will try and bypass this bit and just go straight to the affirmations, but it's not going to work. And then they'll say manifesting doesn't work and it's woo-woo. So it follows the path of, path of least resistance. The reason this one's really important, because like I said, this stuff is hard and change is hard and it's uncomfortable. So your subconscious mind is going to try and pull you back to what feels comfortable. And I know you might think, well, being broke and being in my overdraft isn't comfortable, but it's known. It's known and your subconscious knows what that feels like and it's comfortable there. Whereas saying that you're going to be rich and have all this money and you're going to have these massive tax bills to pay and all these things, that feels really scary and uncomfortable and difficult. And it doesn't want to do the inner work. It doesn't want to do the hard stuff. It doesn't want to get on stage and talk in front of thousands of people because that feels hard and uncomfortable. So it's going to follow the path of least resistance, which is let's just keep doing what we're doing. Let's just keep binging Netflix. Let's not change anything. Let's not do this homework that Emma's giving us. Like it's so much easier to just like sit back and chill and do nothing where I know it's comfortable. So it's going to try and follow that path. So you need to override it. And it represses negative emotions. So this is why you might have a bit of a murky childhood around certain areas. And it's because your brain is trying to protect you from the pain. So it represses them. When actually, if we just allowed the pain to come up, the emotion will only last 90 seconds. And then you can cry your eyes out, fall on the floor, cry, be emotional. Like have all the emotions. Emotions are good. It means you're releasing. When you are literally crying tears down your face, you are releasing it out of your body. Otherwise, if you stuff it down, this is when you blow at something stupid. Or this is when you get sick or whatever it might be. Or it's holding you back from your goals because you're repressing it in your body. And it is in there within your vibration, within your body. And that's what diseases and stuff like that. So it's really important that we 
allow these emotions to come up but just know you might be feeling tons of emotions this week and it's because your body finally feels comfortable it feels safe that it can allow this emotion to come up but i promise you they won't last long we're so scared of the emotion but actually when you're in it yes it's horrible but it only lasts 90 seconds what's actually worse is stuffing it down and it cannot hold opposing beliefs i will talk about this more tomorrow when we go through the reprogram reprogramming process (laughs) but your brain can't hold opposing beliefs so it can't believe that rich people are amazing people and they do good for the world and rich people are greedy it has to pick one so why not pick the one that is going to benefit you and change your life and it stores every single memory so anytime everyone's ever spoken to you said anything done anything any memory you've got is stored within your subconscious somewhere so it's just about making sure that we we choose the beliefs that we want to choose right and just start feeding the new belief systems that we want to feed and again i'm going to talk about that tomorrow when that comes down to the reprogramming process so get your pen and paper ready um what i will do actually is i'll also just copy and paste these into the comments so you've got them ready for your homework but basically i'm going to give you some journal prompts and this is part of the homework and this is the part that is so 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 fucking important this part will honestly change your life so you're going to pick three areas or if you if you find yourself procrastinating and you're really struggling to get this work this homework done just pick the intention that you set today um for this week So for example, when I do this work, I pick like three areas and I'll pick like health, wealth and relationship or like business and friendships and hobbies or recreational kind of fun with my friends, whatever it might be. And I want you to write down in as much detail as possible, being as completely open and honest as possible. What are you currently experiencing within your 3D reality? What does your life look like within that area? So let's say for this week, you'd set a money goal. I want you to write down where is your money at, at the moment? Where is your wealth at? What does it what is it like when you check your bank account? What's a pattern that keeps coming up for you and around money? If you chose health, same thing. What's going on with your health? What are you happy with? What are you unhappy with? What's working? What's not working? What do you wish would be different? What are you getting frustrated at? And then if somebody was to look at your life, if we know that our 3D reality is created by our inner world by our subconscious mind what beliefs must this person hold what must she believe to be true if this is how her life is playing out so let's say for example if she can't get a raise at her job right she's been trying and trying she can't get a better job that pays more money her boss won't give her any more money what must she believe to be true about money if she's always in our overdraft by the end of the month but has a really good wage what must she believe to be true about money there then she must believe that easy come easy go She might believe that it's really hard to save money. She might believe that life is really expensive, that life is hard, that you rich people are greedy, that there's not enough money to go around, that she's not smart enough to get a promotion. What kind of things that come up come up when you think about what this person must believe about her life? Maybe she, she believes she's not good enough. Maybe she doesn't believe she's worthy. And then just see what starts to come up. And maybe some memories might start coming up from your childhood as well. I want you to write it all down because awareness is one of the ways we we change our belief system. And how do you feel about each of these areas in your life? So really get into this feeling, you know, like, oh my God, it just feels exhausting. It feels so difficult. It feels, I feel so sad and disappointed and frustrated at myself. I feel hopeless and like things won't change. I feel sad when I look in the mirror. I feel disgusted when I look in the mirror, like really start to, you can even Google like a list of all the different feelings in the world. So you can really start to understand what feelings are going on with inside you. And that's going to really help you. And this, this is the part that's hard and you might cry and you might feel really uncomfortable and you might not want to own up to yourself where things are, but this is the part that's going to change your life because this is where we're going to really identify what's going on with your belief system. And then this is one of my favorite, favorite tools. And I will do this pretty much every single day when I'm going towards a goal. So this is a really good one to do for the intention that you've set. So the intention that you set for the week, I want you to mark yourself out of 10 on each of these bullet points. So the the trick with this is to write down the first thing that comes to your head. So it's the number out of 10. So one being, there's no way I believe this is going to happen. And number 10 being like, yeah, this is definitely going to happen. I know it's already done. So Ask yourself, oh, sorry, 
your link's on a really good sign. It means you're releasing something. So maybe this is cathartic for me. <laughs> so mark yourself out a 10 on each of these bullet points. You can do it right now if you want based on your intention. But I would do this every single day to see how your score changes. And I'm going to give you some tools tomorrow to help improve your score. But this will... De- de- oh, I can't get the words out today. This will help you see where you're struggling, where you're holding on to some limiting beliefs. So let's say your goal was to manifest 500 pounds this week. Out of 10, how much do I believe it's possible that I'm going to manifest 500 pounds this week? And I might think, and the first number that comes into my head is like a five. So write down five. Then do the next one. How much do I trust it's coming? Six. How much do I deserve this money? Eight. Uh, How confident do I feel that that it's coming from nowhere? Seven. How much am I allowing this to come in? And when I think about allowing, I think about how much am I just like open to receiving this for like no work or from anywhere in the world or by any means necessary. Like it might feel uncomfortable for you to just allow random money into your account that you haven't worked for or hustled for. Or you might think, oh, I don't really deserve any more money because I might just spend it all. So I'm not going to allow it into my space because I'll just spend it. So like, that's how I feel like allowing is, but your body no, will know the answer. We're basically asking your subconscious, we're going to ask them quickly. And it's the first thing that comes to your head. How safe does it feel? Again, this might be, well, I might spend it all. You know, I don't feel comfortable having excess. Like, what would I do with, with more than I need? That seems odd. So like, this is where it's coming from. And then worthy out of 10. And then af- off the back of each of these questions, anything that is an eight or below is something that we need to work on. It's something where you're holding a limited belief. So then you can start to ask yourself these questions. Any questions, like make them up, but any of them are at like an eight or less. So let's say you don't feel all deserving. So you might say, okay, well, I don't, why don't I deserve to have an extra 500 pounds? And you might put things like, because I haven't worked hard enough for it. I don't know where it's coming from. How is it going to turn up? These are your limiting beliefs. So you want to write all these down. And then tomorrow I'm going to teach you how we basically rewire them and, and deal with them and let them go. So do that on any, that eight or less. And then tomorrow, I'm going to teach you how we're going to shift them. And there are so many different ways that you can shift them into beliefs. There isn't a one size that fits all. It's about finding what works for you, what you love. Again, your human design can really play a part in this. So it can help speed up the process. And I'll explain why that is. But this is why I spoke about awareness. Just you writing this down is a way of you releasing them. The minute you shed light on them as well, a lot of the times you look at that and you're like, it doesn't make any sense. And so already you can kind of start to like, negotiate with your subconscious mind negotiate with yourself and be like I don't know that seems odd to me like I don't think I want to believe that like actually if you look at it logically this is this makes more sense so your awareness is so so important when you shine light on the shadow it's no longer in the shadow um hypnosis affirmations scripting which is just journaling visualization gratitude breath work forgiveness if eft tapping which is this if you case you've ever seen it subliminals which I'm really excited to go through with you and I might make some subliminals or I might teach you how to make your own. Let me know what you would like. Um, time meditations, one of my favorite. They really teach this in NLP as well. And with theta healing, it's a really popular modality. Nervous system regulation. I'm really into this at the moment. The whole fight, flight, freeze, fawn. I'm obsessed. Actually, I might do a video on that. I might do some slides on that. And there are so many other ways you could do this. But these are some of my favorites. These are the ones I use on a regular basis. And these are the ones that I'll be teaching you as much as possible. Because again, our time is limited. So I'll try and get as much like through as many of them as possible. Also, I know I talk so fast. I'm really sorry. And any questions, again, please feel free to reach out. Comment on this video. Comment in the Facebook group if you've got any questions. Any kind of aha moments. When you have that aha moment and you're like, oh my God, so that's why I do this. That's why I have this memory. That's why my brain works the way it does. Those are keys to how you're going to change your life because moving forward you're going to have this different viewpoint so the next time something happens the next time your car breaks down the next time you get a massive bill you're going to react differently you're going to have a different viewpoint this stuff is gold this is why you want to keep learning and keep learning and keep doing this work because then in the future as these things come to test you as life happens to you because there's certain things that were out of our control you're going to react so diff- so differently. And so then your life after that point is going to be so different. So honestly, the work that you're doing with this is life-changing. I cannot explain it enough. And when you look back 
in like a few months time or a few years time like when I look back now seven years ago I'm a completely different person and I act differently I speak differently like I react differently so honestly I'm just so so proud of you and I hope you're proud of yourselves for doing this work because I know it's hard but I'm here to support you in these next seven days so really use me reach out to me put questions in any wins that you have put them in the group oh and lastly I have a win already so I'm doing this work with you um over these seven days and I had a company reach out to me because I completely forgot that I did a like a thing where they sent me a journal and I did a video for them as like a what do you even call it like a promo I don't know, I got like an ad on in, on Instagram <laughs> I can't find my words today and basically they messaged me and they're like oh you know we forgot we need to pay you like 100 euros and I was like oh sick I completely forgot so I've already manifested something and it's we're only in like what day two barely because I do these really late at night so let me know your wins let me know what's going on and I'm so so proud of you thank you so much for being here with me and I will see you tomorrow